What's up you guys, welcome to a new video. The first of a series where I'm gonna be talking about real estate in Lisbon. And hopefully this series will have a good ending as we are just at the beginning of the process. In this first video, I'm gonna share my experience about searching and buying real estate in Lisbon. So let's dive into it. 2020 was a difficult year for everybody, especially for digital nomads. As we stopped traveling, we had to settle somewhere we had to change our lives and also we had to change what we're looking for. And one of the things that become very important for us digital nomads was the community. We're just going to places where there was huge community that can support us, that could be like our second families. One of these places was Lisbon. In Lisbon, the community of digital nomads is huge and it's very interesting. This is where my story begins. End of summer 2020, I booked my flight to Lisbon and I landed here. I landed here and I found this amazing community and then I stayed one more month, one more month, one more month. I couldn't help but notice that a lot of nomads here were buying houses and real estate. So I was curious enough to ask why to many of them, just to understand their stories, understand why they were buying them. And I got a lot of useful information that I didn't do anything with it. Fast forward to 2021, the idea was still in the back of my mind. And with the new lockdown, I started thinking about it more seriously. And uh, I decided to take action. The first and most important thing you need to ask yourself before embarking on this journey is why. Why you wanna buy a property? Why you wanna buy a real estate? What's your motivation? And this is different for everybody. Personally, I'm going to share here my why. I wanted to have a home base, home base in a place where there was a nice community that can support each other. The second reason was to have some passive income. If I can rent it out my place when I'm not in Lisbon, I can generate some passive income to find my further traveling. So that was another really important motivation. And the third, but probably the most important motivation, I wanted to learn about real estate. I wanted to learn how to renovate a place. I wanted to learn how to buy. I wanted to learn all the process involved and know if it's something I like or not. So I had my wife set up in stone. I know what I wanted, three strong motivation. Home base, a place they can rent out and a place they can learn by doing. After you know your why, it's time to look for your what, what you're looking for. In my case, it was a place that was not super expensive so I can learn and I can do mistakes. It's a place that I can eventually rent it out and a place that I can call it home, not a big place that's going to be difficult to rent or a fancy place. And lastly, you need to choose where. For me, this was an easy decision and it was Alcantara. Alcantara is just outside the Lisbon city center and is an area where a lot of nomads already bought their properties it's an upcoming neighborhood. They're gonna build another metro line. And it's just, I like the vibe here. And most importantly, being just outside the no Airbnb license area of Lisbon, it means you can still request Airbnb license and rent it out your home. So this was an easy decision for me. So once you know your why and you derive your what and where from this, it's time to go in action and start looking for your property. The best way I suggest is going on Idealista. Idealista is a website and mobile app where you can set up your filters and see only the property that you're looking for. In my case, I know what I was looking for. I was looking for a place in Alcantara, a place that was not super small, so I put 40 square meters as minimum. I didn't want a studio of 20 square meters. And I also wanted a place that it was not expensive. So I put 100,000 at my, my maximum price. I know that's not a lot. I know that in Lisbon, you need to spend at least the double of it. But I wanted to give it a try. It was my experience. So I know what I wanted. So I set up the filters. I set up the area, the square meters, the price and the notification. So every time there would be a new listing, I would receive that in my email or my phone. And then I just look what the filter showed me. Of course, there were many listings for my search, but there were some that I could explore. 
One of these had no pictures, just a map of the layout of the house and the address. The address was perfect, was exactly what I wanted. So I just went on and asked for more information. Always ask for more information. Always go and visit the property. You never know what you're gonna find. Sometimes you find like beautiful picture you get there and it's nothing like that or it's a lot of problems. So visiting the property is always important. In my case, I asked for pictures and this is what I got. Not that nice. I mean, it's a property that a lot of people would have said not worth visiting, not worth spending a morning going there. But there was something, there was something that I thought, hmm, I don't know, let's go and visit it. Usually when you go and visit a property, you get disappointed. In this case, I went to visit a property that was disappointed and I was surprised. I was like, okay, this is, this is interesting. If it's not expensive, this can become really good. I already had in mind the vision on how I imagine this property to become. So I scheduled a second visit with my engineer friend, shout out to Inesh, she's gonna be with us through this journey. And during this visit, she, she said that it wasn't a bad place, it wasn't a bad state. The renovation wouldn't have been so expensive. So I asked her to have an estimate, she said probably 25, 30,000, I'm like, okay, this is even, even a good price. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's put an offer. This is the next step, making an offer. My place was listed for 82,000 and I wanted to pay maximum 75. In this case, I made a small mistake. I didn't negotiate enough. I offered straight 75 and it was accepted. At that point, there's no need for negotiation. They accepted my price. Who knows what would have happened if I would have offered less, but my offer was accepted, time to sign the promissory contract. This is just a contract where you are declaring your intention to buy the house and it's before the final selling agreement. But this is also the time where you pay your down payment that usually is the 10% of the value of the property. In my case, this was a bit higher. It was 25,000 because the seller was in need of money and that was the only way I could get this house. I was lucky because the seller was an honest person. I met this woman, I talked with her, she was in need of money, so I went on with it. But be careful and always do your research, always meet the seller and always understand what you're buying. This is the part I don't want to talk about, but I probably should. Banks. I don't like banks and you know from my background, but also one part of the learning process was to get a mortgage with the bank and to understand how this system works. So I went on with it. And not being a Portuguese, you need to provide them a lot of paper, all your salaries, all your uh, invoices, whatever you're getting paid to do your risk assessment. And this process, be careful, it takes a lot. Between when it started, there was probably around April, May, and now that is 29th of July, it takes a lot of time. So be prepared, it can take a lot of time. So I negotiated two different mortgages with the bank, one for the house, one for the renovation. They got all my papers, they took their time, but as I say, it's gonna take a lot of time. The back and forth, it's very slow. The communication is very laggy. I even use a mortgage broker to help me with a language barrier but it's not gonna add that much. Banks are an old system and they use their old way of doing things. So be prepared. It's a lot of paperwork, a lot of back and forth, and it's very slow. Don't expect an answer the day after or maybe not even the week after. It's a slow process and overall it's the only part of this process that I totally regret. I could have started the renovation probably months earlier if it was for this mortgage application, waiting for the approval, waiting for all this paperwork they need to sign, fire insurance, life insurance, it's just a lot. Furthermore, if you want a mortgage, you should subscribe to at least five uh, products of the bank. They give me a credit card I didn't want, but 
This is what it is, they are banned. So if you wanna go for the mortgage, be prepared for this, it's not, it's not nice. But this is my experience. You may have a different experience. And also, I don't like banks. About the renovation, I have to say that you also need to have some cash available because you need to pay the construction upfront. And then after the construction start, the renovation start, the bank will refund you. So you also need some cash available. In my case, uh, I'm paying 32,000 for the entire renovation process and I need to pay 40% upfront. So I'm also wondering if that mortgage was worth it or not because at the end it's money I need to have already. So it's just to, to don't pay everything and then maybe pay little by little. But as I said, the fees for the mortgage are no low. The signing fee in total for me between notaries and other fees is going to be more than 2000 So real estate overall, it's an expensive investment, even if you use the mortgage and the money of the bank. So consider it before just jumping in because it's a new trend. So on a more positive note, I got the key of the house and I'm going to show it to you the next episode together with the renovation plan that I have for the house because stepping into that house I really imagine what I want to make and together with the engineer and the architect we made a really nice plan but this is topic for another video if you like the information I share in this video please like it and follow my channel as I'm gonna share more and more about Lisbon real estate I'm gonna show you the renovation process of my house from the beginning until then I'm going to interview more digital nomads and their experience with buying properties and real estate in Lisbon. Stay tuned for more updates.